Hey guys, it's Matt. I'm trying a new feature here called Not Nilk Travel Tours, where we go together and visit a place around the world. We're going to Smolensk, Russia, after I show you this Japanese hotel room in just a few minutes. Since we really, most of us can never travel anywhere for a variety of different reasons, if we ever did get off a plane somewhere, many of us would instantly be arrested. There's a lot of re related to the renting of the movie with Carl Weathers' action, Jacksonation. So we'll travel these places, but we'll look at the Not Nilk influence that hits, of course, all over the world in a one world system. And those of you that are driving, and I do typically always, as you know guys, I almost always customize videos to those that can't see it. And I pro you probably can follow along with, there's a lot of pictures here from Wikipedia and Smolensk and a little bit of video, this really beautiful Japanese hotel room I'm about to show you. So guys, in this case, you know, there is more video and there is more to see. So I can't really accommodate everybody at work with this one or with the entire Not Nilk Travel Tour um, segments that we'll do, say, every two weeks. Today's feature is Smolensk. For those that feel since the introduction of CV early 2020 that they've missed out, they haven't been able to travel, or maybe they didn't rent the Carl Weathers movie Action Jacksonation, so they might not be able to travel anywhere again, um, this is what you're missing out on I really prefer sitting at home in a bathrobe doing the 4K walking tour. This is a segment on affordable hotel rooms in Japan. That's the room. It's a bed with 10 inches, I guess, on the left side to get up. Well, there's no running water or bathroom. Of, of course not. Did you guys catch this section of the closed captioning? It's way more spacious than I thought. What, what were you expecting when you visited the automated clerk down in the lobby that also acts as a microwave and got your room key? What did you think it would be? This is better than you thought? Did you expect an Iron Maiden, some metal thing that would just close around your body, leaving you a few inches on each side but without the spikes, an Iron Maiden torture device? I mean, what did you expect? He was thrilled. It's way more spacious then I thought, it's a bed with all the four, it's the, it's the last scenes of Star Wars trash compactor. And how do you bring a Japanese prostitute back to that place? You better hope the guy next door doesn't. I mean, this, they're going for a certain price point here. I doubt the walls are triple reinforced uh, sound reducers. I mean, the guy next door, bang, 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 bang. Hoo, 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 hoo. You better hope the person next door just wants to get some sleep or you ain't going to be getting some sleep. The point is, uh, traveling, uh, I'll stick to the 4K walking tours here with my Genesee cream ales and my bathrobe, which gives me a good idea. Guys, a lot more pictures coming. Let's do not milk tours. I was looking recently at, uh, in Philly we say Smolensk, I believe. It's in Western Russia. I looked up the pronunciation. I'll only get it right once because I just did it. Smolensk, Smolensk, but I can't say that. In Philly, we say Smolensk. That watch in Philly is worth $50, so I'm sorry. At least I pronounced it correctly once. We'll do Not Nilk Tours. We're, that means, Matt, are you going to organize a tour? We're all going to get together. No. We're going to do, we're going to visit these foreign places, looking at it through the, the eyes of us studying the Not Nilk, how the same repeating themes and scripts happen in every single city, everywhere around the world, and people don't think there's a one-world system. We're not going to travel anywhere. In a tour group, one of us, most of us, would be thrown in prison anyway. Do you can you imagine the Chinese social credit score that you carry or I carry, and we're all going to visit Russia, get on the Aeroflat plane, fly in? They'd have us arrested inside 10 minutes if we actually organized a real tour to these places. You want to end up in a Russian gulag somewhere above Novosibirsk in Siberia? I don't. We'll keep it safe. We'll do not milk travel tours with Matt as your tour guide from the luxury of your bathroom, bathrobe, and Genesee cream ales. All right.
Not Nilk Travel Tours, good idea. Start with the Wikipedia, Smolensk. Here we go again. First second I go over there, it's the Better Off Dead movie with John Cusick, Paperboy again. Give two dollars to, here appears the pop-up again. Hi, this Tuesday, December 6th, we're asking for your support. We're the nonprofit that hosts Wikipedia and 12 other free knowledge projects. Of course you're a nonprofit. You'll n never need a penny. You're one of the key tentacles of the system itself, the top floor of the Ministry of Information, its core column if you will, to deliver lies and deception in any area that's important. And that is the key in any area that is important, important to what they call a human being and understanding itself, its history, where it came from, what it's here to do, what is the true role of corporations and government. Anything that's important, it's all lies. An area that's just nonsense and trivial, it's all real. It'll tell you how many McDonald's are in Smolensk. It'll tell you the total kilometer length of the roads. It'll tell you how many mountain ranges are named between St. Louis and Casa Robles, California. It'll give you all that accurately, how many brew pubs or in and around the Philadelphia area, it's all real. In terms of what really matters, all lies. Look at this last sentence. Now is the time we ask. Who, what bot wrote this? Now is the time we ask. What? If Wikipedia has given you two, two dollars worth of knowledge, please donate whatever feels right. No, you haven't given me two dollars of knowledge because my definition of knowledge is different than yours. Knowing the locations of the Waffle Houses along the I-95 corridor is not knowledge, sir. Just 45 more seconds or so before getting to the pictures. Smolensk, skipping 220 miles west-southwest of Moscow. So you know where Moscow is? It's left of Moscow toward Belarus and toward Poland. First mentioned in 863 AD is one of the oldest cities in Russia. First mentioned? What, what does that even mean? Mentioned by who? Santa Claus? Mentioned in a Christmas carol? I don't know. Maybe it'll explain that later. Uh, the city has been destroyed several times throughout its long history. It's the same script for almost every European city. It's all the whole of humanity follows the same script over and over again, a script we notice that few others do. It was on the track for common invasion routes of various empires. Oh, let's see, this city will play its script out just like most of the European cities do, and, and America in its own way, but it's a, quote, the new world, so we don't have this history. But it's this, it's, we live inside a gigantic script that was laid down along, the creeps they execute the script, but they don't lay it down, okay? We, they're not that powerful or important. They're key executors of the script, these creeps. And in saying script, that doesn't mean it didn't happen. The, the, it did happen. The reality script here, things do happen, but it's a script, whether it be a world war or something much smaller. Reality wants you to play your part in the script and has handed you your cue cards your entire life. Now, many of us right now, we're in the middle of this, we're in the middle of this job, we have kids to raise, we are playing out its script, but now that we notice it, the key is to leave the script behind over a five-year period, or however many years you need to trash the cue cards and move off of its timeline or its intention for you. The first thing we'll do with Smolensk is look at some of the architecture where every almost every major city fits the same mold in terms of you can look how wonderful and great the architecture is and you can date it based on how good the architecture is because it gets shittier and shittier as you move closer to the current date. Smolensk is a fascinating way to do this. It's one of the reasons I'm actually making this video, although it plays out everywhere. It plays out even in the United States. Well, Matt, don't, you can carbon date it to see. We don't need carbon dating. If it's a piece of shit trash building, then you know it was built in the last 40, 50, or 60 years. If it's a beautiful building with impossible architecture, then it goes back hundreds of years. And it's a straight linear line. You won't find one exception where you have a beautiful building recent and a shitty building old. You'll see as I go through these more quickly. This says at the bottom, St. Michael's Church was built 1180 and is one of the few surviving structures in Russia, oh no, before the Mongol <laughs> conquests. 
you know what I think about the Mongol conquests. What are those two guys, uh, Genghis the Khan and K Kubla the Khan? You know, by the way, the Tartaria researchers, uh, there's one thing, that one pillar that holds them up that I will, you know, the, the fact that they say that is the Mongol hordes, or the Mongol is, is something else, okay? I, this is the best credibility to the entire Tartaria set of research. Although, you know, I think the whole thing's a not nilk distraction, just like Free Voice when we looked at the trans Paco Taco Paco army. Just not the not nilk throws distractions artificially. No real world could do that, that people latch on to. I think Tartaria and Mud Flood is one of them. But there is, you know, if they come hard with this argument, Matt, don't you, you know, the Mongol hordes was something else. I have to give him that. It wasn't no King Genghis the Khan and Kublai the Khan setting out across the Mongolian steppe where there's not even a water fountain or a porta pot every thousand miles. That's a bunch of horse shit. I hear you. If there was this army that swept over one third of the entire world, it was something else. I would say it's invaders from attacks from Mars before I would say it's the Mongol hordes. But it's attributed to the Mongol hordes and people that have bows and arrows that live out on the Mongolian steppe. So be it. That's what Wikipedia puts forth. Give them their $2. All right, guys, let's go through the architecture and the buildings of Smolensk a lot more quickly, where we can actually date the buildings just by looking at them. Just by looking at it. Just You can see if they're old world or if they're newer trying to replicate the old world look and feel horse shit. You don't need to go visit these buildings. You can just tell how old they are. That's awfully arrogant, you son of a beach. Well, follow along with me. I'm no genius. I can barely glue two blocks together, but it's obvious. Smolensk gives this phenomenon away. Well, most cities around the world follow the same damn script. You'll see. Okay, look at the intricacy of how this is. You know, it's, it's not blowing you away. It's not the Cathedral of Cologne, but it's very nice, classy. You know, you put it 120 to 140 years old. Very nice. But then, well, that's nice, but, oh, you know, it's looking kind of trashy. Not quite. They're trying to be old world, but still very impressive. You know, 80, 100, 120 years. Okay, let's keep going. Matt, you can date these buildings just by looking at them, you arrogant son of a beach. Well, you can too. I'm no genius. Look at, look, see, they're trying to be the old world here. Look, they got columns at the bottom. Well, shouldn't we have them all the way up to replicate the old world? We we don't know how to put them all the way up like the old world. We'll just put them at the bottom then. We'll just make it look good. And then hang the damn air conditioners out the window here. Air conditioners? Why would they need air conditioning for just four or five days a year in Smolensk, west of, of Moscow? How hot could it get? Anyway, you could just tell. Okay, building's probably 80 to 100, 120 years old. They're losing it. They can't quite replicate the old world with this horse shit. There's no way a building that looks like this was built that long ago. Okay, this is this is obvious. Look at this horse shit. I mean, they're trying. Put the columns up as high as you can. Well, I don't know, cinder block them and then encase them in brick. We'll make it look like the old world. No, you're not pulling a big downspout down the side of the column here. Just as people walk by, just dumps the sewage out on your shoes. Look at this horse shit. It says it at the top here. 1936 was... <laughs> Matt, well, these buildings got bad, Matt, because of the communist and the east, the whole Eastern Bloc feel of architecture. You can blame Lenin and Stalin for that. No, it happens everywhere around the world. Go look at the Nabisco and craft plants in Trevos, Pennsylvania. They're horse shit. In the Philadelphia City Hall is just 20 minutes away. It happens everywhere. It's not just blamed on a Soviet uh, Eastern Bloc and communism. All right. Very impressive, but not that great. Columns high up. They could do that in the yesteryear. They can't do that much today. Pretty impressive, but not that intricate when you get up top. I'd put this building at maybe 120 to 160 years old. Uh, nice. Pretty intricate up top here, which makes it old world, whatever these battlements are. But, you yeah, know, the columns don't go up real far. Looks like trying to keep the feel of the old world architecture, 120, 140 years. I don't know. Still pretty nice, though. Oh, no. <laughs> Look at this. What the hell is this? It looks like a McDonald's meat packing plant or potentially the global world headquarters for five below or a dollar store or something like what is this guy that got shoved up along the side this statue okay this is horse shit 
that was built somewhat recently. Got these vent pipes coming down. They're not even trying to replicate the old world with this. And th- and this is what Wikipedia shows as a highlight for Smolensk. You should be ashamed of yourself, Smolensk. All right. It's a fakery. It's an old world. This building's probably 120, 140 years old, but it's still an old world fakery. It's get the columns to go all the way up, but cinder block them and then encase them in something that looks good like this marble or granite. I'm not impressed. And look at the top. No intricate carvings along the top. Looks like a library in Des Moines. No, thank you, Smolensk. This ain't getting me to rush out there and do the tourist thing. Oh, boy. Can you see the difference? The old world comes through. What was this called when I researched it? The Smolensk Kremlin, I think they called it. The original Great Wall, protective wall around the city. And I know it's it's brick, and it's you don't you know it's not this impossible architecture stuff where it shouldn't have been able to be pulled off, but the class of it, the feel of it, I mean, it's a completely different feel of architecture, even though it is it's a simple brick. I mean, look at the way the the brick goes out as you go up, and, it, and you know you, you hear what I'm saying, guys. This is not impossible architecture by any means. But the old world just has a feel to it that the new world horse shit can't replicate, eh? Check out the look and feel of what comes through with the old world architecture. And even something as simple as brick. And I don't know what that roof is, but you'd bet your life it wasn't built in 1975. You'd bet your life for what return? $10? You bet your life against... It's so obvious this wasn't put together in 1975, whether it be Russia, part of Europe, China, Japan, or anywhere in the United States. It just has that feel. Like you want to get in a sleigh. You want to be in a sleigh right here, approaching it with a big bottle of Stolchanaya vodka as your horse takes you around the side of the wall in your sleigh as you get drunk. There's just something about it you can instantly feel. Look at that. And guys, I remind you, because this is not Nilk Travel Tours, we're not going to go see these places. We Again, we'd be arrested inside of 10 minutes. I mean, we, we'd be held up at the airport or something. We'd be diverted to Guantanamo Bay, our charter plane. But there's no limit on not Nilk Travel Tours where your imagination can take you. You want to pause the video now? Have a little picnic there in the grass on this side of the wall with maybe one of the Smolensk uh, girls that, you know, we heard 98% of all the men were wiped out in the wars, and it's still a town of almost 100% women. If you want to have that fantasy, or you could reverse it, all the women went off to war, and it's just men. You have the fantasy you need to have. This is not Nilk Travel Tours. Wouldn't you just love to have it put out a blanket there? Just a blanket, a bottle of vodka, and some fish heads. I think that's what, <laughs> that's what they eat in that part of Russia, fish heads. Let's move on. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, boy. Do I have to say old world? That ain't... You're not going to find that in Trevos right off Route 1. No, you're not, sir. Okay. They're trying. It's probably 150 years old, 160. It's nice. It just doesn't feel old world now, does it? What they say to Joel Goodson? It's just not Ivy League now, Joel, is it? You've done some respectable work here, Joel. It's nice. It's not that old. It's just not that nice. Eh, it's nice. You're trying. Eh, not so nice. You didn't really even try really well. The big downspout coming down the side here, dumping its sludge. and eh, Not too nice. Look, they're trying. They're trying to get the free energy up here, but no, not quite there, is it? Only day, look at it, trying to brick around the windows here. I, it's 160 years old or so. Not too good. Yeah, they're trying. Pretty impressive. Big building. I don't know. Probably 200 years old. Not old world. Yeah, they're trying. Not too intricate. I don't see no statues, no intricate carvings, big downspouts. There's always downspouts, big ugly downspouts coming down the modern shit like the old world had no idea how to remove water and rain. Like that's something new. 
mm, very impressive old world, and you can tell they slapped this piece of shit. Look at this piece of shit building. They says when they bring the, the horses in and out. Look at this piece of shit building they slapped on after the fact. Is there any doubt? That's terrible. Look at this building they built here next to the old world Orthodox Cathedral. What is this building here? Some 19 Stalin esque meatpacking plant or something. But this is, you get this everywhere around the world. Again, it has nothing to do with Soviet era Stalin, Lenin, old uh, Eastern Bloc. No. You get this all over the place, no matter where you go. Old world, of course. I was thinking I better pause, especially what I just said there about old world, to give you my take on what is going on here. We haven't talked about this for six months. There's probably a lot of new people. So somebody might say, Matt, so you believe that these ancient civilizations existed and were squatters. We just came in and took over the old buildings. No, I don't believe that. We'll go through all the possible scenarios. But I don't, we don't know what is going on. Anybody that says they do, doesn't. We do, I see it as a reflection of reality itself, which some people say is a cop-out. I'll get into that. No, I don't believe... See, believing that these buildings really were here thousands of years ago, and then people just took them over, and then we passed them off as our own, that's looking for the answer inside of your little reality bookends or looking in your toy box. I don't do that anymore. Well, Matt, then how do you find the answer? Sometimes I don't. We don't. So what? It's an anomaly of reality itself. That's where I'm putting my tail on the end of the, the donkey. I don't look into my reality bookends anymore where it just has to be there, the answer, or in my toy box. I don't do that anymore. I've just seen too many weird things in reality. So, no, I don't believe it's all past civilizations and the Philadelphia City Hall was built a thousand years ago, but they just passed it off. You know, there are so many, so many ways to explain this, these, these old world architectures inside the reality bookends, and none of them add up for me. You could say, well, there were techniques they had that they don't share with us now, or the world itself was different, where blocks could be floated and then they could ma be made heavy again. I am, who knows? I'm just tired of looking at it in that light. I see the entire reality as a trick to trick a real soul. I don't differentiate between Roseanne Barr or The Ellen Show and the Cathedral at Cologne. Now, maybe that's insane to you, but if I've backed up far enough where I look at the entire reality as a trick, and if I spend 20 years of my life trying to figure out how the old world architecture was constructed, whether we can come up with an answer or not, I see that as what the not milk reality system that tries to hide me from what I'm supposed to do in life, I see it as part of the general trick. And that position becomes more and more um, cemented as the weeks go on. I don't think there's anybody that will ever be able to explain how the buildings get more and more impressive as you move back through time. My point is, stop trying to explain it. It doesn't matter for the worry about your self-philosophy we all should have. The between the bookends explanations, or as I will say, swap it with inside the toy box, just get more and more ridiculous. People will put forth, first of all, the whole series of channels, they'll show you how easy it is to hoist a 20-ton block by a piece of cake. Even if that was the case, you don't have five of these structures, like the Cathedral of Cologne is on par with Giza. I'll talk, I've been to Cologne. I'll talk about that in a minute. I haven't talked about it for a year. I'm just going to do it again. It's incredible. There's not five of these or ten of these. There's a thousand of them all built when the primary worry of the day, 99% of what everybody was worried about from morning till night was basic survival. I'll say it one more time briefly. I've said it a lot recently. When the electricity goes out here, people are like, oh, Matt, you just did nothing. Catching up when you're reading? No, you have to work like a dog. You work 10 times harder when the electricity is out. Just going to get water can take an hour. If some channel comes and shows me how you can lift a 20-ton block with uh, three levers and some ropes, that, fine, but that has nothing to do with the argument that I'm making now. It has to do with survival. So here's what I'm saying. If there were five or six or seven or eight of these in the world, you have Giza, then the Cathedral of Cologne, then the, the good Becky Tepe and the whatever that is, and the, the uh, Great Wall of China, let's say you have 10 of these around the world. 
okay, maybe for those 10 things, the conditions during that period of what's called history were so perfect and there was so much extra and abundance and peaches were coming off the fruit trees that they had all this extra time to build these ridiculous, grandiose structures. Maybe that you could, you could make that case if there were 10. There's a thousand of them. Maybe there are 2,000 of them, not on par with Cologne, but on par with like friends of the channel, like Irwin, the ex-university uh, professor. He used to, he's seen 20 of these sites. And he's, I remember, if one email I remember more than his and any other, he said, every single one I visited, there is no possible way, Matt, this could have been built with donkeys, ropes, jackasses, uh, hammers, chisels, whatever. So again, it, it, that doesn't even, that by itself, I believe Irwin. But even if he's wrong about that, you would still need the conditions where you're, there's no, you're no longer worried about basic survival. Those conditions would only exist in five or ten places throughout a thousand or fifteen hundred years. Every other place, like a cold city, Cologne, Germany, be like, we're going to build this thing. How big is it going to be? And we're going to get, we're going to bring in these thousands of people. What do we hear in terms of the stories, like Braveheart and the movies? We all hear that the king's coffers are empty, right? Every it's all a repeating theme. Well, where'd the extra money come from? Where'd the artists or the artisans come from? It none of it adds up. The entire world, if history is what they say, maybe it's completely, it was just the golden age. Everybody lying around with lube under fruit trees and you had all this time to build all this stuff. If there was this whole golden age that we that they call it the dark ages, maybe it was the golden ages, everybody had fig trees and fruit trees lying around with lube, then I'm not aware of that. To me, that's not what they present as history. I, don't, I can't say that's what happened. That would explain this, <laughs> but we don't know anything about that. If it's what they say in any way, people worry it takes an hour to get water, it takes three hours to prepare the meal for the family, it takes an hour to clean up. There's no extra margin in reality itself to be able to build these structures. Five or ten? Sure. A thousand or two thousand? No. Well, what is it then? I'm not, I don't care what it is. It's a, um, it's a reality giveaway just like everything else to me to not take reality seriously. I don't care what it is, and it will never be figured out. A minute or two more just on the Cathedral of Cologne, Germany, because I've been there. You've heard me do this once or twice over the years, but it's been a while. I'll keep it brief, guys, but I just can't express to you, if you're new here, how massive and ridiculous this structure is. I can't get closer to this image. I don't know who owns this image. I'm going to you know, zoom it out over time. But you see all those buildings around it. They're full-size warehouses. They're gigantic apartment buildings. They look like ants compared. Look at the buildings around it. These are full-size five-story apartment buildings, full-size warehouses. The thing, I can't even express to you how large and ridiculous it is. You come around, I'll never forget, you come around the corner, we're walking into Cologne, hungover from the night before, you turn around, the, turn the corner, I, you know, when you're, when you're close to the buildings, you, you know, you, you're blocked by the building or you're, the streets, and you, you turn and there it is, and you go, you've got to be kidding me. What? And you see it from a distance driving in, you're like, oh, no, we're like 15 minutes away. Like, what? It's beyond anything you can possibly imagine. It, it makes... Um, other cathedrals around the world, you could put bunches of them inside this one. It's absurd. And um, there's no scenario when it started in 1200, 1300. Here's what we're going to do, get people together. It, it, there's no possible scenario, 1200, 1300, 1400 Germany, where you just get people together. It could be done. It's not possible. But I'm not going to try to look for the explanation anymore. Everybody's worried about survival. Well, how do where do we get the the thousands of master craftsmen? Are they just hanging around here in the bars of Cologne? We'll bring them in. Who? Where'd the money come from? Where did they Where did they stay? How'd they feed them? Hundreds of years. One group to I don't know. It just doesn't make any sense, and I'm done trying to figure it out. The, the all you these YouTube channels, it's all they do is try to figure it out. To me, that's part of the general reality trick. If you want to call that a cop out, call it a cop out. If you're Mandela affected, it's not a cop out because seeing reality change in front of your eyes overnight, just because it's heavy doesn't mean shit when reality is fluid. 
back to Not Nilk Travel Tours. We're back in Smolensk. I'm just going to read what each one is. This is The Scorched Flower, a monument to child prisoners in concentration camps. We'll come back to these. This is a monument to Alexander Zardovsky and Vasily Turkin. Monument to the 2nd Sophia Infantry Regiment. This is a cannon in Lopatinsky Garden. This is a monument to the defenders of Smolensk. The view of Heroes Square. The Grateful Russia Monument commemorating the centenary of the Russian victory over Napoleon. The bust of Mikhail Kutz. Kutsov, sorry, Mikhail. All right, and we're back. And I'm going to keep showing these same monuments and busts over and over again during this commentary. Remember the video not long ago about the tourism cat toy? That tourism in some way is like a reality, not an cat toy. You jingle the cat toy, it has some bells in it, get the cat's attention. This goes along with it. Every city of any stature, almost everywhere in the world, it's the same sort of presentation isn't it, to the people. It doesn't mean these battle at uh, Lopatinsky Garden where that cannon, it wasn't, I'm not saying it wasn't used. It Maybe it wasn't. Some people in our community believe that, that it's all a gigantic script. But it, it tries, the reality, you've heard me say this many times, it tries so hard to be believed in. And whether these battles took place for real or not, or in exactly the way Wikipedia says or not, it doesn't really matter, because again, as we move all over the world in not no travel tours, the presentation it makes with these monuments, and it, it did it again the big day in 2001, the 7-Eleven job application. There may be a thousand 7-Eleven job application monuments around the world. There may be 5,000. I, mean, I found when I was doing my research on the local town down here, King of Prussia, Pennsylvania, called King of Prussia. In the, their firehouse has a little monument you can visit out back with a piece of steel. They oh, there's so much steel and rubble. There may be twenty thousand monuments around the world to that odes to themselves, but we'll talk about that some other time. It just it reality when you back up far enough, it it makes it tries too hard to be believed in the and and it does it in the same way through the monuments and the dedications, and the squares, and the local police force right down here just did a whole monument down there to the world wars. And, and, and people aren't in on it. It's just the scripts they run. But if you back up far enough, it doesn't mean this stuff doesn't happen. But somehow it's part of the reality cat toy, like the tourism cat toy. It's the cat toy that reinforces the not nilks view of reality of what the pe they want the people to believe reality is we have separated from it so much that although every single one i'm showing you matt don't be um disrespectful real people died here and they probably did but you can see it if you've separated from reality as much as many of us have you can see this as part of its presentation do you understand what i'm saying and the more you get involved in its presentation, the more you get closer to reality itself or root yourself to it. Now, there could be certain monuments and busts here that the fiction of the history, in other words, might not be legitimate. But I'm saying it doesn't matter whether the history is completely legitimate or not. It comes off to us as a faux presentation. Because it's the same, these, look, that, the, what's the shape of that monument? The, it's the same type of presentation all over the world. Wouldn't one culture do it a little bit different? It's the same war memorials, the same bus. Go to Valley Forge Park. I'll do that sometime. It's the same people on the horses. And well, Matt, don't you know one foot horse raised up says he died in battle. It's the same bullshit all over the world. So in terms of these monuments or these presentations, Every bit might be correct. Let's say the monument to a bat, the battle mat in this case took place exactly as Wikipedia says. Okay, the battle took place exactly as Wikipedia says. Everything that they say this guy did is true. Everything about this event 
uh, is true. Now, the people then, aren't they just trying to, as anybody would, commemorate the, yes, the people that put this together that raised the money locally at the city council, they're trying to commemorate the event, but you can, they're still following a reality script. Is it the download? Maybe. It's the frequency, it's the download, it's the radio station. How the people, they're, it could be a gigantic reality presentation, but they're not in on it. Everything's legitimate. They're not in on it, yet people crazies like us still see it as a reality presentation. And because it's so similar all over the world, you know, this, I, anybody new here, this is probably sounding pretty crazy. Matt, it's a real monument. You're admitting the battle's probably real, and the people put it on and put it together with good intention. So what's the problem? The problem is when you back up far enough from the entire reality, the whole thing starts to break down as some faux presentation. And, and what's the point of it? Very simple. It goes back to Vitruvian, man. Every single time, if you're here close to it and interested in its battle monuments— and it's busts, and what happened here, and rooting to here, somehow that keeps you away from what you're supposed to do here. It's simple, Matt, these monuments to real battles it is just another distraction. Can you believe that? It's the same two sentences, just another distraction. If you agreed with me what I was saying about the tourism, the major tourism sites, like the Leaning Tower of Pizza, where everybody gets in the same cattle chutes and waits in the same lines and pays the same fees, and then they can check that off their bucket list. Though so I saw this site, I saw that site. You kind of most people did get a sense of what I was saying about it's a reality cat toy, in some way. It's reality making a presentation, and these monument sites. I doubt anybody's going to come halfway around the world to see them, but it is along the same vein. It's the reality cat toy if you see what I mean. I guess I'll just shut up. Either I, I expressed that in a way some of you can understand, or I didn't. I get a feeling with this one, the old guard kind of knows where I'm coming from, and some of the newer people are like, Matt, if they build a damn monument to a battle that really took place, what are you talking about, reality trick? Eh, maybe I can find a way to say it better uh, in the future. Well, let's continue, not milk. Travel tours, we're supposed to pretend all of us together, like-minded people, are going to see these structures as we are seeing them now. But if we really got off the bus, remember Farley, Chris Farley in Billy Madison driving the bus? That Miss Vaughn is a piece of ass. Remember remember the bus driver? He, he, we have Chris Farley driving our bus as we, we're going all over Sl Splomensk, like the uh, UK football uh, soccer team invading... France in Euro trip. That's what we would be like. Well, we would have been arrested a long time ago. We'd be seeing these sites and we these busts and causing all sorts of problems and people would be walking by trying to mind their own business. We'd be like, you believe this bullshit? You think this really, sir, you lived in, how long have you lived in Sl Slominsk? My whole life. You believe this battle really happened or is this bullshit like everything else? I mean, we would, we would be arrested um, very, very quickly. Because one of us would get out of line, and then we'd try to defend them, and the whole lot of us would go off to Novosibirsk and Vladivostok and the Siberian gulags. Let's take a close look at this monument uh, more closely. As we were moving through the monuments, I hadn't looked at any of them closely, just making general points about how it seems these monuments and busts all line up with the tourism reality cat toy we talked about a few weeks ago. Here it says at the bottom, you can't see it, the Grateful Russia Monument, Smolensk, commemorating the centenary of the Russian victory over Napoleon. Okay, Russian battle with Napoleon, 1812. I think there it says 1819. I, well, I guess it's 1812. I looked it up on Wikipedia. It said 1812. It looks like a nine. But then this would have been built 100 years later. So what's the problem? There's a lot of problems. Um, what does... It looks like either a, a, a it looks like an Indian, but uh, it's a centurion, I guess, from ancient Rome, with a sword, climbing a rock, defeating an eagle. What does that have to do with the good and valiant Russian soldiers uh, beating back Napoleon in the winter? I mean, do you see the one world symbolism here? Is just it doesn't even try to hide. I mean, it's it. I'm looking as close as I can, guys, with it with it zoomed in that you can't see. Um, it's it is a it's a Roman soldier, 
Okay, the, the Roman armor up top. The Roman, uh, it's a Roman soldier, 100%, with a sword um, taking on an eagle. None of which has anything to do with the local Russian population. Um, this one world symbolism everywhere, and nobody cares. And people, I guess, for hundreds of years just walk by. Um, or a hundred years walk by this monument, Smolensk, and said, "Oh, that's a nice, it's a nice tribute to our boys." I, I, you know, I don't even know what to say. I mean, this is closer to the back of the dollar bill, the U.S. dollar bill, than anything that would present itself as Russian history. But we're 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 crazy. We're just we're out to lunch. Yeah. Okay. I had to look up what that thing on his shoulder was. The military uniform with the things on the shoulders. I don't know what you call it, tassels on the shoulders. It's called an epaulette. The point is, you've heard people in the truth community talk about this before, but things we notice, it's just right in the face of your friend and your cousin, but they just don't notice it. They don't ever put two and two together. So why are the military uniforms of every country for the era or the time period basically the same? Basically the same. So this epaulette on the shoulder. I don't know who this person is in Russian history. It says 1912 at the bottom. I don't know if that's when he died. I guess I, I read it a few minutes ago. I forget. I apologize. Okay, but these things on the shoulders, this epaulette, that could be um, Admiral Halsey or uh, and it, it, this person could be in the British Navy over uh, Russell Crowe in Master and Commander. And then you see similarities even today with China and Japan and Russian uniforms and and they have the you know whatever the points are that would say a sergeant's rank or where you put the medals or what the medals look like well aren't all cultures completely different I mean why why do we just assume that has to be the case why should Japan's military uniforms look like ours today why not look like now this is just oh they're going to carry forth 50 years ago they decided to carry forth the samurai tradition Look in samurai garb, sword will tell you if you're a general. Why does it have to look like a, a Canadian or British or German uniform? With slight differences. I know you can pick out from movies the Nazi uniform of the SS versus the United States in World War II, but there's similarities. The epaulette on the shoulder, the way the medals are placed or hanged, or the or how a general would wear a hat. There's no reason for these types of similarities unless... If anybody's new here, it's obviously all d derivative of a one-world system. Aren't we told, I mean, cultures are completely different, derived locally on their own? Why wouldn't the military dress be completely unique for all eras in history? A Russian, uh, by the way, their top of the line is called Sukhoi 33. The Sukhoi 27, which is really a badass fighter jet, um, it morphed. It, what happened to the Sukhoi 28, 29, 30, 31? The next version was the 33. Um, that has to look somewhat like the US F-15, because to fly, it has to look the same as something else that flies. But in terms of what a general wears, doesn't. But it all looks the same as you go back in history. Not the same, but similarities that don't make sense if cultures are derived locally. All right, this is the last one that we'll look at today on our Not Nilk walking tour. We're all here around the monument. I'm, we just parked the bus. The Chris Farley bus driver went around the back of the bus to steal sandwiches. Who's left? We only have about half the group here that we started with. Half of you are in jail. There's a few that have already been sent, I've been told. That they've already been sent to Siberia. So, see, I, we have to rush through this, guys. After we do this monument, I have to go petition the State Department <laughs> to see if they'll intervene on our behalf. State, hello, State Department? Yes, is this the U.S. Embassy, Moscow, Russia? Oh, it is. It is good. My name is Matt McKinley. I led a tour group into Smolensk, Russia. You've heard about us? Oh, oh well, that's great, I guess. Yes, yeah, see, the problem is half of us have been arrested, and they've already taken a few of us away into the Siberian gulags. I think right now they're in the cattle car on the Trans-Siberian Railroad. We need your help. What do you mean you're, you're not going to help? It's your duty, obligation, and commitment to serve U.S. citizens in need, especially when bogus legal charges and criminal claims have been thrown against them. We need your help to get them out of the gulags, and they could be in prisons all over Russia at this point. We need your... 
Hello? Hello? That's why we don't travel together, guys, and see these sites for real. So to wrap up our virtual tour here, can anybody in the back of the Amish classroom tell me the problem with this war or battle monument? Anybody in the back? Put those spitballs down. Put them down. Anybody, not in the front, the back, the spitball. Yes. It's an, that's right. It's an obelisk. And what's that? Don't say it like the dick. Call it the phallus. Don't say dick in classroom. Don't even say penis unless you're specifically talking about the Osiris and Isis story. And that gold mem... Yes, that, of course, that's where Austin Powers' gold member came from. Isis and Osiris and the cut-off golden penis. Of course, everybody knows that the obelisk is simply... Okay, call it what you want. The dick. So can anybody in class tell me why it's appropriate when honoring fallen heroes from a certain battle or war, to honor them with what can only be interpreted as a gigantic dick with an eagle on top. Yes, anybody? Yeah, be, because the one world system needs to be honored at the same time. Why? Yeah, yeah, continue. What They always have an ode to themselves while passing it off as something else. That's exactly right. I mean, who's that that gave that answer in the back there? Is that that's life? Move, move up to the front. Move up to the front, and I will talk to our elders. You won't have to clear a field for the rest of the year. Thanks for listening.